I, we've done 800 of these episodes. I'm supposed to be normal. And then <laughs> there's like three people in the world. And then this is what happens to me. You're one of those people. It's, it's Honestly, frustrating. That is so wild to hear because you have such a hugely successful podcast that so many people adore that I'm just like very honored to be one of the three. That is iconic. If you could feel what my legs feel like right now, <laughs> then you would know how human I am in this moment. And it's so good and oh. embarrassing I <laughs> adore you and I don't have the words so let's just leave that over there um my family and I have come to see you four times this, no year, this year alone this year alone is that normal that's totally normal that's amazing I'm about to see Beyonce for the second time and I've seen every single tour I'm um, gonna say something so sacrilegious to you you what? you guys you guys are so with like a thousand o's bigger to me than beyonce is that a wow. horrible thing to say no it's not a horrible thing to say okay really that's how puts, i feel i i really puts into perspective how you're feeling right now i am like so honored i've never felt this cool in my life <laughs> it is so legit what i feel and anyone who's listening right now is proud of me because anyone who knows you feels the same way and they're feeling like I'm an ambassador on their behalf because oh. all the Pentatonix fans want to do is this they want to stand there like a spotlight and like drown you in love oh. because it's not a normal thing it's not love it's obsession it's what it is and that's needing to be said right now so there we go we've said it oh now gosh. we can move on now literally we can I feel on. like the <laughs> I'm obsessed with you I, I feel like like the Pentatonix supporters and fans are just like so, such a beautiful group of people that are just so full of love. And I think that's one of the reasons we've been able to stay a band for so long. Um, it's called, support. here's what it's called. It's called a vibrational match. It's called, I love that. It's called five human beings. A couple of them change, change characters. But most of them are the same five humans who literally have somehow this insane Herculean talent plus no ego. I don't understand it. I can't get it. <laughs> I don't understand it. But I know that when people are in your presence, they're better humans. Oh, they're just better you. humans. You know thank that you. that's true. No, I can't I, stand I, it. I really, no, I really, really genuinely appreciate that. And I do think when you say vibrational too, it makes me think of like literally scientifically vibrational. I feel like there's yes. something to harmony about human voices coming together and what the sound waves do um, that like, on not only bonds us closer to each other, but connects us with um, with others as well. That is 100% true. And there is so much data that supports that. The most impressive thing in the world is love. I don't even understand how much love you, your capacity to give love is insane. Oh, I, I just want to say, and you're so freaking funny. Oh I don't God. get it. I don't understand. God was like giving out talent. He's like, okay, we'll make him really <laughs> cute. We'll give him amazing voice. But then he's really funny. Oh no, you're not allowed to have all of that. <laughs> Stop it. Thank you. I can't. Gosh. Will you like, uh, will you make an alarm for me to wake me up every morning? I'll just start every day. Just like feeling. Uh, my yeah. And you. you're the cutest. Okay. So let's, oh. let's get into your story. You have this incredible drop today of this amazing music. Like how cool that you're even making time for this. I'm so excited. My audience, by the way, is like your audience. It's like mostly girls between like 35 and 40 who are obsessed oh with you guys. And like, all we're going to do is run out and buy this record. Oh. I started the show in my closet six years ago. I happened to be friends with Ben Bram. He was one of my oh, first wow. guests. I have watched you guys since the moment, since go. Okay. Wow. That's why I'm like this. Okay. Let's just come. Yeah, 12 like, years. This has been a long time coming. That is so amazing. Anyway, and then now this show has grown to like, I don't know, 50 million downloads or something. But all I'm going to do, because I talk about, I talk about the pentatonics on this show more than anything else I've ever said, is that. That's all I'm saying. Okay, that's oh just gosh. for the record. So now let's get into you. So before we talk about today's record, I want to hear your version of the story of you finding out that this is what you're doing with your life. What, 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 oh, wow. where were you when you're like, I think this is what I'm going to do? You know, it was just kind of like a series of events that was very transformative for me. So during the pandemic, 
I'm so used to being on tour all the time, working all the time, and then coming to a stop. We all experienced this. It was just like a really jarring, crazy thing. And so Pentatonix wanted to keep making music, but we had to do it remotely. So we all had to learn how to use an audio digital workstation. And so I learned, started learning Pro Tools, which I had been like putting off learning how to do for years. Um, but no big deal. The... Just go learn Pro Tools. Yes. That's like saying I'm gonna go learn rocket ship engineering. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, that's why I had never started because it felt like such a untouchable, really hard technological feat. But the thing is, once I like learned the basics and got past the tedium of like the frustrating beginning parts, it started to kind of click, and then I became all of the sudden became completely enamored with it like obsessed like I was when I was a kid playing a video game and I would just every night for hours just mess with it watch YouTube tutorials I wanted to get better at it and it felt so good to be obsessed and like enter a flow state every night and so I just started like arranging things and writing songs and I got into this habit of writing a song even if it was like a 20 minute quick write or something writing a song every single night and it was kind of a version of journaling and also was like honing in my craft of, as a writer, singer, and like my Pro Tools skills. And so as I was doing that, the songs I were writing were starting to feel better and better and more authentic and more authentic. And I was just really falling in love with the idea of telling my like really personal story and putting together an EP. And it also was giving me this self-esteem and bringing me to this place where I was down to release it without putting pressure on it to be extremely successful or culture altering. I like felt like I could go to bed at night proud of it. And that was such a freeing, beautiful feeling that now I'm just doing this because it comes from an authentic flow state, amazing place. And it's about, it's like a love letter, the whole EP to my husband, Mark, and it all just, it's all lining up perfectly. And um, it's been a beautiful experience for me. I love that whole thing. I love that you decided like, oh, there's a pandemic and you have every good excuse to just sit around and watch Netflix and chill, but you then <laughs> take this on. But then it actually becomes so in flow, as you say, and these songs are so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's it's courageous to do that for so many reasons. I mean, to share your life and all of that is courageous. But I feel like when you come from something so successful, you feel like, okay, you know, I'm going out on my own now with something and like, are people going to compare this? And then often those things may not be as good, but I feel like, and you saw the genuineness of my obsession with you. The songs are so good. Like, I Thank don't, you. I'm like, how do you do that? Like lightning usually doesn't strike in the same place the same oh, time. It's they're wow. really so good. You should be so you are, and you should be so proud of the, these songs and your vocals are amazing. And, and it is such a celebration of this insane love affair. It they doesn't do. make any sense. Like most people never have that, that version of what love looks like for you guys. So oh, I'm so you. glad you wrote a whole record about it. Cause it I had to, <laughs> Yeah. They, but that was so beautifully said and so sweet. And I genuinely mean it. I say thank you so much for that. That means a lot. Yeah, I wrote the whole thing about Mark because he is like my muse and I'm in this like happy, loving place in my life. And so um, it just felt natural to write a song about him every night. <laughs> it was what just is, like, yeah. I feel like some of these songs are so, I feel like it's so powerful because I think people have given up on believing that level of love exists that people will really be that empathetic and walk beside you and make you better. And the way you talk about each other and it's so obvious from his face and every expression that we ever catch of his, it's like you both really have the capacity to do that for each other. What What is that even like for you to have found that in your life? That's so big. I, I it's even hard to put into words. It's just, it's a huge relief, one. Two, it feels, it feels like any obstacles I went through in my life or that he went through in his life all feel like they had a purpose and like yeah. led us to each other. Yeah. And I think we have similar journeys, but at the same time, uniquely different journeys in some way that just like fit together so perfectly. And both of us have a really, really go with the flow type of energy. We're always late <laughs> to everything because we're just like, 
we um I feel like we're both very present in the moment and I think that that really connected us on a deep level and I above all though I just feel like he is the one of the kindest people in the world and that's so obvious by the way and I think a big part of thank you that I think a big part of like love and relationships with fr friends significant others family anyone is like kindness putting in the effort to making someone feel heard and loved and like even when our, if, if an argument happens it's like let's approach this with love and like not make it too passive or emotional or intense um let's feel our emotions but let's like lead with logic and love and kindness in any type of and be solution oriented and i think that it's just so amazing to meet someone that's down to do that all the time i don't even get this really because <laughs> usually people who are as talented as you are have this shadow side where they're really self-destructive and it's uncanny to me that you are so available for healthy love and you have the depth to be that talented at the same time. Really, that's Thank you. that's not normal. It's almost like God, the universe knew you had a really big job to do. And mm -hmm. so that was going to be clean. So you could just do your job because your job, it's insane. Like when I watch you on stage in front of a gazillion people, it's like you're just the kid next door standing in our living room being like, come on, guys. Let's just have fun. And then everybody <laughs> feels like a better version of themselves. And I've never seen that. I don't know any, I, I see performers and I'm like obsessed with like their talent, but then there's like that, that thing that comes with it, that like cost, which is like their ego and you kind of put up with it, but you, that's not you. So it's like, it's so generous. Like you're, you're going around the world being so vulnerable and so generous, so humble that it's almost like, okay, Maybe that is, maybe that does make sense. It's like, you're going to get this beautiful support and it's going to be so healthy so that you can just, because you, you've like raised your hand to be so spent all the time taking care of us. I feel mm -hmm. like that's what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. You have a way with words. I can see. No, why I, I'm podcast, like, huh? I ball the whole Ugh. show because Thank I'm you. going, this is so singular. Like it's so singular. It's you can feel it. It's not like you're enjoying it, but it's, it's like so obvious that you're doing this for us. It's like, mm -hmm. come on guys. There's a lot going on out there. Like just breathe. It's okay. Yeah. Like it, just, mm -hmm. yeah, I can feel it. I love that. That's how it comes ac across too, because it really does. Like I love to perform so deeply and I know how rare it is to just be able to do it professionally so one, I'm just grateful to be there and that people love the music and that they're like affected by it and moved by it. But also it's just like, I love singing it. So I'm just like, so the, the energy's right. And I've learned that, I think maybe this is from being a queer person and like having to create a character for myself that I have to unlearn and relearn my authenticity. I think because of that experience, I don't want to ever be putting on an act yeah. um, when I'm, on stage or connecting with people, even if it's like a, a bigger version of myself, I'd rather be vulnerable because having to pretend to be something I'm not is something I'm familiar with from the past. And I think it like would bring up some dark emotions. So I just want to be my myself and like do what I love and sing music and write music I love. And and um and then and even if it uh it turns certain people off, I don't want to like craft something people will like better. I just I can, I'll have more bandwidth if I am myself. You know what I mean? I, I love hearing that that's part of what happens for you internally. I, I think that human beings are often really patronized and then people think that they need to be impressive because that's what the ego like wants. But I feel like the reason the pentatonics is so massive is because love is the most impressive thing and people get that. Like people totally. vote with their heart because they when if you're willing to meet them there, if you're willing to be like, no matter what car you drove here, who you voted for, I'm going to love you. And I'm going to bet that you'll love me back. And I yeah. feel like that's the only time I've ever felt that way is at a pentatonics concert. Oh and gosh. then I watch the whole audience 
turn into one family of people. And I go, that's not, it's not a normal, that's so awesome. It's so awesome. And I want to talk about that for a second, because a lot of people don't know that you, well, we can talk about this thing off in a second, but a lot of people don't know that when you had eventually this prize, which was this record label, you initially got dropped. And then it's, it's your own grassroots movement that created all that this is like no marketing strategist is behind. It's just your vibration turned into a match for a zillion people. So <laughs> can you tell that story? Because that's kind of the origin of what I'm Yes, I love that you brought that up. It's one of my favorite stories to tell because we did like win this big fancy prize and we were on a TV show with millions of viewers, but to be dropped right after, (laughs) I'm actually glad that I was so naive at the time because I feel like now it would have even felt darker in a way, but like we were dropped, which felt devastating. And, uh, but it ended up being positive for so many reasons because one, a reality show contract, especially back then, was just like, Ugh. we own you for life and you make no money type of thing. And so getting out of that was actually the most life-changing thing that could have ever happened to us. Wow. And then it also like kind of lit a fire under us to like really take our career into our own hands and not like wait for label execs to tell us who to be, what to say, what to make. Um, and so we just one day... I got out my like iPad two resolution pixels, maybe like three. And I set it up and we sang a cover of Moves Like Jagger and we just signed up for a YouTube channel um, and we just posted it. And um, that was the beginning. And I feel like YouTube was, a, it was super in a renaissance at the time too. It was such a cool way to connect with people directly and sing to them without these filters of like, business things we had to go through and people can feel that authenticity like you're saying they can feel that connection yeah and it was also really fun it was like fun for us because we had we had so much control over it and um and then when the youtube channel kind of exploded we had the leverage to kind of do a deal that was fair and uh yeah and i just feel like it's like definitely a testament and proof to anyone out there to like post stuff even if you're not sure about it and to like put yourself out there uh, because it's wild what it can turn into. It it's literally mind blowing. I mean, but you can feel it in how you said it that like, you just had this again, that that you weren't in it for what is going to happen. It was like, we just were having fun and we want to put this in the world. And I feel like, it starts with that spark of generosity of like, this is just what we're doing. Like, we're just going to be doing this. And that non-attachment is then it's everything, right? Because it allows you to just keep enjoying the thing that you're doing while you're doing it. And then at least you don't need discipline (laughs) because you, or maybe you do that. That is so beautifully said. And I got full body chills when you said spark. Oh my God, I love you so much. I can't stop saying it. (laughs) Because spark is the perfect word for it. I feel like I can even see it in eras of pentatonics, like when we had more of the spark and less of the spark. I feel like we've always like kept the vibrations pretty high, but you can feel when we're making music that comes from more of a fun place. And I think that that's why it took me so long to do solo music because I was so scared of it and I was trying to figure out what my sound would be. And like, I was thinking about it too much, but now I'm in a place in my life for so many reasons, a huge one being my husband, Mark, that accepts and loves me for who I am. I feel like I'm in a place where I can just have fun and have that spark when I make art because you need that. It's all just like rows and rows of like yumminess, like everything, you know, Mm -hmm. every every thing you share, your husband, every member of the band is like so special. It's like, it's just all... Like I said, there's very few things in life that just stay so pure, each layer of them. It really is. You know that that's true. It, it you know, that's okay. That that's, that's what makes it, you know, I, I guess that's the sad commentary, but that's what makes it so special is that there's so much contrast in the world. There's so much hard stuff. And then absolutely, we don't expect that something's just going to be as good as it seems. And then it is, totally. right? And then you guys just turn out to be, even cooler and kinder than like 
you'd expect you to be. And it's just, a, but it should be that way sometimes. And you guys are that example for me. But anyway, what I was going to say next in this line of beautiful things is like, then you guys got your star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. <laughs> and it's like, what the heck? Hell, like that how many nice. acapella groups, acapella groups, zero besides you, right? You're the only <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, I, th I think so. I'm not 100% sure, but I, I do. Um, I think we are the first. Would you ever have dreamed like this is what's going to be your life? What is happening? I, I was so shook by that. And just like, I just remember having to remind myself to be present because I was in a whirlwind being in that event. It didn't feel real. And the first time I came to Los Angeles when I was 12 years old, the first thing we did was go to the Walk of Fame. I wanted to see the stars. Oh, and like, and to, it's just really cool. And the other day, um, Mark's nieces and nephews, well, I guess mine too, we're all family now. Um, <laughs> but uh, they took a picture with the star and it just like was this moment where I was like, oh, our kids and our kids' kids. It's just like a piece of history um, that like, I feel like my family for years to come can be so proud of. And that just like brings me all the joy. It brings me so much joy that the, it was built brick by brick on just this love of being with your band, the love of making things. It's like, it's not like somebody discovered this thing and then you went into like a Max Martin machine and they like created you as a, do you know what I mean? Like this is right. so insane that this would happen. It just, it <laughs> I don't think that. people really get the level of how insane it is. And can you just tell everyone, cause you've known You've known Mitch. You you guys have known each other since what? You're eight or nine? I've known Mitch since I was ten, and I've known okay. Kirsty since I was like fourteen. But then okay. Mitch and Kirsty have known each other since they were like seven or something. So we've all, but we all went to high school together. We did choir together, and we've just been through ups and downs. We've had like really close, not as close, like a family. And, and um, but we've just always known that like we love each other in the end. Like we are like, like blood and like um. And now, especially, I feel like it's made the whole tapestry of our story more beautiful, like the thing, the ups and downs. And, and we're in this place where we're all like very grounded and know who we are. And and um, we're all really close. I feel like the band is more unified than we've ever been. And yeah, it's been amazing. When did you first sing together, the three of you? Because I guess you're the, you've known each other the longest. When did you first sing together, the three of you? Just the three of us, like as a trio, the first time we sang was my and Kirsty's senior year <laughs> and it was Mitch's junior year in high school and we wanted to audition for this radio contest to meet the cast of Glee when they went on tour and uh so we put a little performance together and we uh, we sang through it and this is another reason I say always put yourself out there because after we did we were like I don't know it doesn't feel very special let's ditch it but as we were walking out of the choir room we ran into our two friends Kayla and Kelly and they were like wait I heard y'all practicing something, sing it for us. And we were like, okay. And we sang it for them. And they were like, they like freaked out and loved it. And we were like, maybe it is kind of good. And then we went and showed our choir teacher. She had us sing it at this like pops concert at the end of the year. Someone filmed it in the audience and put it online and that went viral. And then that's what inspired us to go on the sing-off. It's like, it's just all these planets lining up. And I feel like those magical kismet planets line up when, when you just follow what feels good and like exactly. make, make what you love and be around the people you love. And, and um, I feel like that was a really amazing lesson to learn early on. Okay. What you just said, that's the whole thing. That's, that's the answer to everything about life. What you just said, Oh my because gosh. we've, we've decided in our mind that this whole thing has to be hard. And, yes. and then, and then everything feels like, of course it's about like, I don't know, perceiving that it's hard and it's far away and it's this. And it's like, no, when your vibration, to use that word again, is in word. this like loving, silly, magical place, uh, that's sort of like the key to the portal called you're just going to have synchronicity. Like yeah. you're available for that. Why can't it be that? Yeah. And it can be hard to get to that place too, because I've gone through phases, but that is what I'm always striving for is that easy, calm, like flowing with the universe. And synchronicity starts happening all the time too. Like, I feel like all these coincidences start to happen when I'm like in this, like in that type of place. And, um, and yeah, that is like my life's goal at all times to strive for that. I can't even imagine <laughs> 
what the rest of this gets to look like because you're you're a very young human and hopefully you're here for 120 and it's like <laughs> you've done so much already but that's what's so exciting i mean look you know the beatles they like wrote many 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 more songs and like had many different hats that they wore so i guess that that's what's coming but it's it's hard to believe like you're you're so young to have done so much but it's it's still it's still coming. I guess I, my question is, you, you've been around the world now, I don't know how many times, right? Does it still feel really new and fun? Does that experience still feel like worthy of doing again and again? It honestly does in a lot of ways. There's some ways that it feels like, like I need to do some other things in my life. But I will say that like learning Pro Tools and becoming obsessed with it, that was a really big paradigm shift for me because I hadn't, obsessed over something like that in so long and so I think it kind of opened this portal for me to want to learn to do new things and I realized how much there is out there literally this drum I bought like four days ago um, because I was just uh I've just been wanting to learn new things and there's so many avenues to make art and making art is like by far what I love the most it feels like a the like a real example of magic you're making something out of nothing and it's immortalized forever I think that's so cool and just I like want to act more and I want to oh write God. more and I want to sing other genres of music and I've just learned that making art of all kinds is really fulfilling to me and um and in this new era of like knowing my worth and owning my power I feel like I I genuinely believe that I can make all these different types of art so it does feel like there's so much to come and so I don't yes. feel this like oh now what type of feeling okay that really gave me goosebumps like I just viscerally <laughs> felt that because you you each have magic tricks that are slightly different right and you, you have this thing that's larger than life that's kind of the thing that you have and that makes so much sense when you said like you would lean more into acting or other creative things and all of a sudden I was like yeah there's so much about to happen like it's it, it is it's that's a that's a definite like because it's all the seeds are there and the fact that you would be open to that yes like that that makes a lot of sense that that there's so many other things for you to explore and master because you are hilarious and you make everyone feel at ease so it's almost like you could be Jimmy Fallon. Oh my gosh. That is, no, I'm really yeah, saying it. You. Like I'm saying, as I'm saying it, I'm like, that's a thing. Cause you're, you put everyone at ease. You're super obviously musical and fun. It's like, yeah, I just got the hit that that's so cool that you are aware of that and open to all that stuff. And that's very exciting. Thank um, you. It's a new development. I feel like too, because I, and I feel like a lot of, a lot of people do this and I did it for so much of my life is attach my identity to something so yeah like grip on and I was like I'm the acapella guy who riffs right. and like that is who I am and it's been so exciting to be like what if I want to be a physicist <laughs> there's no way but but maybe there is a way you know maybe there is a way mm -hmm. yeah indeed I feel like we've had a few other musicians on this show um who talked about stage fright i don't see that like at all in your stratosphere and at the same time i wonder when you're standing there like hey guys let's make a TikTok. i'm like it's it's literally impossible it's it's called something that's not supposed to happen where you're supposed <laughs> to be that at ease in front of like one hundred fifty-five thousand humans at one time <laughs> like how do you get yourself in the zone to not think about being conscious and aware of like being looked at as a human on a stage that needs to do well like how are you overcoming that with so much grace how are oh you doing gosh. that well one thank you again that's another beautifully said compliment I um you know it's this is a really interesting thing I think that being I get stage fright like for like live television or when then like when it's like a crazy interesting crowd but then after touring for a while I didn't have stage fright as much on a Panasonic store 
But I feel like I am a different person on stage than I was even two years ago. I think two years ago, it was almost like, I sometimes I compare it to like, like drag. Like a drag queen, once they're in drag, they like become this confident. Yeah, yeah. Not all the time, but like sometimes that's their like way of like expressing themselves confidently. And I felt like when I go on stage with Pentatonics, I was like, Scott from Pentatonics. And I was felt really comfortable in this character. Um, there was authenticity to the character, but it was just showier. But I feel like now it's still upbeat, but it, there's more authenticity to it. And now that I feel like I can be myself and I trust that I'm going to be able to do whatever I want to do on stage, sometimes I'll like not even prepare the TikTok or have to bail on it halfway through. <laughs> but I've just like learned to stay calm on stage and just really be myself and let the chips fall where they may and that was such a scary a scary jump to make but as i noticed like oh i feel like i'm more eloquent when i like don't overthink what i'm gonna say and i feel like yeah it's just been it's been really cool discovering that not scott from pentatonics is on stage like I, that's just scott can be on stage yeah. even if it's with pentatonics but the most vulnerable real like scott scott um can can be on stage and kill it. That's been a fun discovery. You're the single most comfortable human I've ever seen on stage. And mm. it makes everybody in the audience comfortable. That's that's the irony. It's like when you're like not caring if the TikTok works or whatever, we're all like, oh my God, you just gave our whole nervous system an upgrade because we're all people who walk around in our own self-consciousness and then you're fine. So it like it's like medicine. Let's it's like giving so permission. Cool. Like let's yeah. all just like put our guards down and keep it chill. <laughs> yeah. It's it's yeah. it's so Thank good. You. With Thank you. with with the new EP, what do you want people to walk away with? What do you want people to know or feel? I want people to feel moved, uplifted, inspired. I wanted to heal people. I feel like bubs like I want people to feel less alone if they've lost something or someone close to them I want people to feel the love that I'm portraying in this album because it comes from such a visceral place and um I also want queer people and queer youth to see that love can exist yeah. for queer people or people in general um and I just hope it makes people feel good. That's like it, as good as it made me feel making it. It was like a profound milestone, epic, transformative, momentous occasion in my life. And um, I think that even if you don't relate to every lyric or something, that the feelings associated and the real energy that went into the EP, I think it could be um, very healing for people. I love that you say all of those things with, again with like so much love and like humility and there's such gentleness and and some of those things are like so important and can be really activating right like that there's so many kids who grow up and feel so cast aside and that's like a really important issue and yet everything you deliver it's like all right let's see if we can have this let's see if I can make a difference in this conversation and and do this with just like so much love when I can't even imagine what it's like to grow up as a kid in Arlington, Texas and have that experience. I don't know if you feel like sharing a little bit about what that's like, but I feel like those are important stories to tell. Like, yeah, what was that like for you? And, and is that something you had to, did you feel like you had to kind of erase that part of your identity for a while until it felt safe enough for you to, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was tough. I mean, I think that I didn't even realize it was tough at first because I didn't understand it and I wasn't educated about it. And we didn't really have social media when I was really young. So I didn't see a lot of queer people in media or have a community online, which I'm so like happy that more youth has that now. Um, so I just felt like I was like different, but I didn't want to be. I was actually like really, really uh, passionate and worked really hard to be like everyone else and like yeah that wears on you 
after that makes like, me want to cry yeah i'm about to i'm about to shed a tear or two but like uh you know in 17 years of my life you're hiding your truest self from everyone even your family and knowing that not one person knows the real you not even your mom is like it hurts and um but i will say on the positive side i think it built empathy in me and like love because i want everyone to feel understood as i know the feeling of being misunderstood and um and yeah i think it made me a stronger person and a beautiful person um but it was yeah it's tough it's just tough in your formative years having to create a character for yourself it takes a lot of years to unlearn that <laughs> i'm so That's glad that you i'm so glad that you shared that Oh. I, I can't even believe that you have the ability to still be present with sharing it because I'm sure you've shared it before, but it's like you don't disassociate from what you're feeling and you are so present. And that's really that ability heals people because the people listening to this, whether they know someone who's queer and going through that or whether they are. Everybody knows something they hide about themselves because they want to belong. And, and whoever that affected, it only affects them that much deeper because when you shared that, it was like you were telling it for the first time. That is such a, that's such an indication of your emotional intelligence. It's like, that's what makes you such a good songwriter. You, you, you are so available to feel what's there to feel. And that is, that is the definition of empathy. That's so singular to you. That's so unusual that you could just do that. Um, and it's so important. And it kills me that story, that story. Like I, I remember when I went to see, um, <clears throat> dear Evan Hansen mm -hmm. and I was hysterical. I, 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 I was like, what just happened? And it's because everybody knows that feeling of waving through a window, which I know you guys covered too, oh, but yeah. like, I'm, and I love that musical. And I'm sure you guys are BFFs because he's the best. Oh, yes. Ben Blatt. Yeah, yeah, I can only amazing. imagine that when you guys get together, it's just like, it's just meteor showers. But yeah, that feeling, I think the reason that show was so beloved is because everyone knows that secret that it's the same secret everybody has on some level, which is you don't really know me. Yeah. But it's even levels and levels and levels and levels of levels of more extreme when we all kind of walk around the elephant in the room which is that it's not fully accepted yeah I think to, that we all just, you are yeah. you know exactly yeah no exactly I also feel like we all want to feel love but we all just like we all have to protect ourselves um and it's just um I think I think a big thing I've learned in my life is there's so many people in this world so many and people that will accept the real you and so i'm just like now i just feel like i'm just like opened up completely and i just want to be my most authentic self and in as scary of a leap as that was i was like if i get a million unfollows on instagram i honestly would not mind because i just want to be myself <laughs> and like right. and but it's 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 amazing how the second you do that the opposite of what your fear happens. Like you start to feel comfortable in yourself. You start to have more energy. You start to attract the right people. Pieces start to fall into place. Um, and that's also, that's not me encouraging anyone to come out before they should. I know there's like a bunch of factors involved, but I'm just saying like the second I was able to really like own who I was, it was, it was just like a relief. Yeah. Ah, it's so good. It makes me think, um you know, this idea, like we didn't come here for a pile of stuff. And we often think that we do, you know, we come for like followers or how much money or what house or what car. And it's like, we really come for an elevated beingness, you know, like feeling yeah. whatever that feeling of expansion is. And that being authentic, I've actually never met anyone who has two qualities, who's not happy. And it's authenticity and gratitude. People who literally live authentically and have gratitude are the happiest people because you're not mm -hmm. assigning your well-being to anything outside of you it's like oh, that's a, that i mean a, that is a, all my favorite people in the world are the ones that are just 
grateful, authentic. It's the reason I fell so in love with Mark. He's just like, he is down if our car, if we're on our way to Coachella to see our favorite artists and our car breaks down, we'll have, he's down to have just as much fun in the car oh listening. God. And, uh, you know, it, it's just like, you, like, it's okay to just like exist anywhere. Um, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say, but it's just like uh, being able to exist with him anywhere and make the best of a scenario or stay calm in a, a negative scenario. And like, it, it's just uh, something I am very, very grateful for. And so I was like, marry me. <laughs> what do you feel like is one of the biggest ways that his love has changed you? Oh, do we have another hour? Um, I, I, the first thing that comes to mind is there are, I feel like there's quirks about me that I have been insecure about my whole life. Like little awkward things or things that are just like a little too weird where the room is like, huh? <laughs> like, or like the eyes dart away and stuff. There's like those type of things about my personality, a goofiness and over the topness um, that I have just really worked hard to fix. And Mark, I feel like loves those parts of me and thinks they're amazing and like, and not just in like a compliments me and says, you're amazing type of way, like in a nuanced way, just like an authentic reaction of positivity to those qualities when they come out. And it was made me able to own them more. And then now I feel like they've turned into my superpower in a lot of ways. They made me a better actor. They made my music more creative. And now I've like taken a full 180. Now I like own those parts of myself uh, and don't worry too much about um, if I need to change my personality to fit in. It goes back to that same theme, but to answer, that's a long-winded way of saying, Mark has like loved me so purely and deeply that I've learned to love myself again. It's such a giant gift and it's like, so I used the word before obvious. It's so obvious. Anything you guys have, any content you put out of the two of you, I mean, his whole face is just emanating just light and love and kindness. And uh, I say and, all those words in my mouth because that is exactly it. It's such a treasure. And I love that what you said earlier is like that every hard thing you had gone through, like turned into something each one of those horrible, painful things is like, you appreciate all of this and, and you, you've mer merited something just so over the rainbow, like, and it doesn't make it okay. It just feels like it turns it into meaning or something like that. Absolutely. I, I mean, I'm grateful for the person I am because of that journey. And hopefully I can play a role in like, normalizing queer love and inspiring parents to accept and love their child so they don't have to go through those things um and they can lead a life with love without it coming from a such a painful place um but at yeah. the same time i am also very lucky to have parents and a family as well as mark that are very accepting of us and that is not something every queer person gets and so I want to also use that privilege to like put our queer love out there and normalize it and hopefully yeah. inspire people you're right that's like also truly unique and good for them like good for them for being the people that just got it like totally. that says a lot about them but I'm not surprised like I said you have a you're so healthy, like you're so not dysfunctional that I kind of equated that to somebody must have loved you a lot, you know, like I could feel that because you're just so loving and lovable. And mm -hmm. I don't know, like there's, you have a capacity to be loved. And so many people when they experience something different, then it takes a while for them to function in something functional they'll just keep calling in something that feels familiar so I felt like yeah. the two of you because he also has that very um it's just it, it I wasn't surprised when you just said that your parents were both 
awesome. They're they're so loving. And I feel like even if at first they didn't totally understand the queer community and they weren't hateful about it. They weren't like, not in this household. They were like wanting to understand <sighs> more. And they're they like, I feel like a kid just wants to know that they're loved. Like That's even it. if you're pretty worried simple. about yeah, it's pretty simple. That's <laughs> like I feel like a through line, love the shit out of your kid because <laughs> uh, uh, they need they need it. That's can I say uh, that word on this podcast? You can totally say it. Yeah, I feel like I can't I say said, it. I'm pentatonic, so I was like, I'm gonna cuss. <laughs> I, yeah, this is my moment. This is my moment. Shit. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I think you guys do so well. I I've literally sat. I, I told you I saw you guys a, a bunch of times this year and I got to see you at the Hollywood Bowl last was it September October that was legit top three one of the best nights of my whole life like wow watching you. you guys at the Hollywood Bowl the air my family's with I was just like this is it like this is how how does it get any better and um I remember thinking and I swear to you this sounds like an exaggeration but this is the truth I remember thinking this is it. I'm going to tell you what I thought. I said, this, I said, this must be what God had in mind when he made people that it could be this good. Wow. What I, I love that. No, honestly, because I was like, the talent is not, it's not a normal thing. It's insane. It's not normal. It's bizarro. And then the sweetness. And I'm just like, I couldn't, I was weeping. I was like, whatever this is, if we could just take this and every person who has hate in their heart would witness this, I feel like they'd be healed. Like, I don't know how you could hold that and not get it because words yeah. don't teach, but love like that, that's crazy town. It's amazing. Yeah. I can't handle Thank it. You. Thank you. And I absolutely love that you picked, you talked about that show because we've probably done a thousand shows at this point, Pentatonics. And I would say the Hollywood Bowl show this past September is probably my favorite experience on stage my favorite show ever something about that night was like really magical and I feel like every band member we were more open than normal I feel like we're pretty open most of the time but like we were really free on stage and in the audience it just like there was a there was a magic about that night I love knowing that you felt that because I feel like I got to share one eighteen thousand of that with you um <laughs> Do you have, because Pentatonix fans are, they're just so worthy and deserving and they want to know all these things. What is, what was one of your favorite top three? Cause it's hard to pick one. It's like children, three of your favorite Pentatonix songs and, and, and recording them. Like what were three of your favorite songs and, and, and the recording experience of a few songs or videos that you made? I would say that my favorite Pentatonix song just in terms of if I was outside of the band, was a fan, was Hallelujah. I, when we had a mix of that, I like listened to it so many times in a <laughs> row. I was on a plane from LA to New York and I listened to it over and over on repeat, like engaged to listening, like listening to every part of it for basically the whole five hour flight. And I just like, uh, I just remember that so deeply because now that's like the standard of like what I strive for whenever making something and um so that's a really big one and I also love the process of making it um was like very improvisational it didn't feel like we were stuck in a page really trying to move notes around and make chords right that was one where we were all just like in a room um hmm. singing and improvising lines and like so and like a lot of what we did in that first voice memo of just freestyling ended up being used. Mm. And I think that you can feel that because like every part is fun to sing because it's what someone would naturally sing. And like that, and so that my other one would probably be Mary Diddy know because it's very similar in that way. Um, and then another one, this one's a little left field, but we did a collaboration with Jacob Collier for White Christmas. And um, what well, Jacob Collier arranged it was a collaboration with Manhattan Transfer, who's iconic and have paved the way for vocal groups. And um, they sound so good in it. And like it was just so fun to do like in kind of a full out kooky arrangement, like children listen to the puppets and stuff. And like all it was, it, I just love listening to that one too. 
I can't tell you. I I've already said so many things that I feel like you're desensitized. I mean, that's no, probably not a good at thing. all. But I, I just I wish I could tell you the times I've been driving in my car thousands of thousands of times, bawling, feeling like I have a biological upgrade from oh listening gosh. to your no I don't even know how to say it and I know other people that was feel, a really cool way to say that I'm just saying like my entire inside like I have like the biggest downloads epiphanies I I cry my eyes out I feel healed I feel I can't even I'm oh, just that's so like, cool to hear everybody I know who knows the pentatonics wants to tell you that and maybe doesn't have a chance to or doesn't have the words to but it's like you are such a gift. It's like, uh, oh, thank you. I almost that feel bad so... that you're in. I almost feel bad for you that you're in it, that you don't get to experience oh. <laughs> like I do. Like, I'm like, who knows that for you? Um, oh. But what I do love is how you love each other. I was going to, that was my next thing I was going to say to you. I love how, even though you're all like, like Olympians, you will like give each other so much love. It's like, that's what I mean also about the ego thing. Like when Kevin's on stage, you're like, oh my God, that's <laughs> ridiculous. You know, and then you'll say things about Mitch, like his voice, let's be real. Like who can, it's like, you, you all are so talented. Is that so true that you all just look at each other with like so much reverence for your talent, each of you? Yeah, I find everyone in Pentatonic so mind blowing. And <laughs> it's also like, we know that together we've we're, we've got this magic magic thing, and we all have our like kind of our magic tricks and ways, as you were saying. And I think it's it's we like can achieve more together than if like we didn't support each other. And it's also not fun to be on the road all year long and doing all these shows and working so hard if you're like in comp too much competition with like. The people you're working with like if we were trying to take each other down I feel like it would just be such an awful toxic atmosphere that would exhaust us and it is such a grueling schedule that like that's not the only reason we do it we also just genuinely love each other but I love is easier than than competition in a way you know what I mean <laughs> it's so beautiful no, so I I'm just I don't know I feel so lucky that somehow this thing that I do means I get to talk to you because I've I don't know. I'm just, I feel the same way. I'm, I feel lucky to have been on this podcast and I feel like the way that you articulate things and the compliments you were giving and the way you were giving them were like really hitting, you know, that so feels that, that means so much to me because yeah, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just the best thing ever. It's the best thing ever. And I mm -hmm. love that I get to take my three little girls to your shows and to have seen it all it's just amazing so oh. tell everybody where they can buy this record well, obviously we'll put the link in the show notes and we'll send it out but um it's out it's here yes it is out it's called parallel um my name is scott Holling, and you can just get it anywhere you stream music and then you can follow me on all the socials oh and oh my gosh mark's instagram handle changed today to mark Hoying. And that was Stop. such a fun moment for us. We're like, Mark Hoing. So um, yeah, so follow us on all the things. And I hope you love the EP. I put every part of my soul into every lyric, chord, melody, and I'm just so proud of it. And I think um, I think people, it'll really uh, bring people love and like. Okay, well, my very last compliment is that I want you to know, for whatever it's worth, maybe you'll remember I said this, maybe you won't, but when you hit your head on the pillow at night, tonight or whenever, I just want you to know that even though there's 8 billion people or so in the world and lots of people do lots of things, you make such a giant imprint. It's so big. It's so big. And I want you to know that. I want you to know it. I want you to at least know it, that when you go to sleep at night, it's not at all part of the noise of like all the people. It's like something else. Oh. And um, Thank you. it's so <laughs> awesome that you turn out to be so good and sweet and kind in addition to having all that magic. It's so cool. And I can't wait to meet your future children because they're going to be oh my gosh. ridiculous. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart. Thank you. This was the best.